friends and colleagues. You know, recently I went back to in-person interpreting for the first time in way over a year. Uh, the assignment required traveling and I arrived to the venue the same day of the event. As it is my usual practice, I arrived several hours earlier, in fact, that very morning, to go check out the venue and to see the situation of the booth, the technical equipment, the sound system, and all those things that as professional interpreters we should always be checking. At the time I arrived there, I noticed that they were in the process of installing the boots because this is one of those events where they don't have a venue with permanent boots, but these are the kind of the temporary ones that they come and they install and then they take down after the event is over. I immediately noticed that where they were situating the boots, it was going to be impossible to see the stage and to be able to look at the screens where the speakers were going to be projecting their presentations. I went to the person in charge and I explained that that was not a good idea. The person looked surprised and said, but you are going to be listening to the speakers, not looking at them. Without going into a lot of uh, specifics and arguments, I gave them enough uh, arguments to convey the fact that we need to see the speakers. In fact, this was going to be the first time in over a year where we could actually have a tridimensional uh, idea of what was going on in the environment of an assignment. Uh, they didn't really love the idea, but they were very accommodating and they did move the boots to a place where all interpreters could really see the stage, where we could really see the screens and where we could be out of the way and away from the entrance and all those noises. This uh, made the event a very successful first in-person event after a long time. However, it reminded me that sometimes when we go to ballrooms, convention centers, uh, hotels, uh, universities, colleges, and other places, we not necessarily find a, a location where they have the booth properly situated in the event that they don't have a permanent built-in booths already. Uh, at the beginning of my career, I had to endure certain things because I was not assertive enough to demand the change of location for the booth. Uh, I remember situations where uh, in one, on one occasion the booth was right next to the vending machines, so during the rendition, all of a sudden you could hear if one of the attendees got up and got a Coke or some other soda, you could hear the uh, clicking of the coins, the going down of the coins, and then the tumbling of the can of soda going all the way uh, down. That was very annoying and that really didn't help us in the booth. I remember other time also where they decided to put us right next to uh, the coffee machines and the tea machines and cookies and all those goodies. So for the most part, uh, the second interpreter, that is the passive interpreter, had to spend a lot of time just getting people to move away from in front of the booth because uh, they were blocking uh, our sight and we couldn't see what was going on in stage. I don't like that anymore and now I really worry about it. And I think that's a good practice for all interpreters. That's why we always should go and visit the venue. My practice is to go the night before or the day before if possible, but if not because of scheduling constraints or because of uh, travel limitations, to at least show up with plenty of time, hours ahead of the uh, assignment to make sure everything is okay. If everything is not, then you have time to fix it. If everything is smooth, then you have time to go and relax and enjoy a meal or a nap or to rest or to go sightseeing or whatever you want to do before the event. That is a very good practice in my opinion. Uh, once that you're assertive, then you are able to guarantee your client a better service just by things as important but that sometimes are so overlooked as the location of the booth. I remember one time, and this is years ago also, but at the time I was already uh, taking care of these uh, details, that I arrived at the venue and this was a very important event with very important individuals who were going to be speaking in a ceremoniously way. Uh, this was a, The setting was a table, like a horseshoe table, and on one side was going to be one delegation, on the other side the other delegation. 
I cannot say the names of the people involved, but these were names that you could recognize the moment I said them. I got there and I noticed that they had put the booth behind a pillar and facing towards, partly at least, facing towards the wall. I couldn't take this. So I immediately went to the person in charge of the event. I explained what our needs were and I told them what was the place where I think the booth should be. In this case, we only had one booth because it was only a bilateral negotiation. Uh, the person looked very annoyed, very bothered. Uh, she told me that it was too late, that they had already the room set up and that the flower arrangements were coming in and that they just couldn't fix that. I explained to her and to her supervisor that without a proper interpreting environment, then that meeting was going to be a failure because these people could actually not meet, could not talk to each other, could not negotiate uh, without the aid of the interpreters because they did not share a common language. Finally, and after a long time, they decided to move the booth and the event was successful. One of the arguments against it was that these people told me that to do that they had to lift the carpet because they had already uh, laid down all the cables and all the wires underneath the carpet and this would require moving all that. The person told me that obviously to intimidate me but I didn't, uh, that, he, that person was not successful and they had to eventually move the booth. And I think that's very important. So. Friends, colleagues, please always make sure that the booth is properly situated so you can do your job. That is very important now that in a lot of places people are starting to go back to in-person interpreting. Please make sure that the booths are where they should be. Try to get the best possible ideal uh, placing for them when they are not fixed to the room. Ideally, I like them to be at the back of the room raised if there's a mezzanine or a second floor on the auditorium to put the uh, boots up there. That way you have an unobstructed view of the stage, you can see the audience and you have privacy. That would be the ideal situation. The second ideal thing for me is to have all different boots on a row next to each other so that interpreters can communicate with the interpreters in the other boots in the other language combinations. And the last thing on my wish list is hopefully to be able to have access to the booth uh, through a different door, through a different gate than the people attending the event. That way we can go in and out without being unobtrusive, without a uh, having to uh, sometimes endure delays because people are coming in or out and there's crowd control and you have to be uh, flashing your credentials or giving explanations to gain access back to the booth where you are required to be. So let's always keep all this in mind. I understand this cannot happen all the time, that sometimes the booths will be in different places and that's okay as long as all booths can take a good look at the speakers, see the stage, see the screens, and that they are unobstructed and they are away from the common noises that we all know come with a conference or a congress, regardless of the subject matter and where it is. So please don't uh, just omit this step. Always, always, always check the venue ahead of time and always take care of the location of the booth that is as important as your rendition itself, that is as important as your preparation itself. At least, that is my opinion. Thank you very much.